¿Cómo está? Bienvenido How a la jugada crítica de Telesur. To la paz en Siria moves. The peace in Syria is still at the eye of Russia, Turkey and Iran. The maximum authorities of these countries met in Ankara to hold the summit of this nation. And to what point is this summit to start the to restart the agreements, summit discussions? What points uh, did they reach agreements? How important for the strategic uh, for the st strategy does this have? How true is it that the U.S. is withdrawing from this war? Let's begin. As we said before, in the city of Ankara, there was a trilateral summit about Syria. And what they were, the countries that were going were Russia, Turkey, and Iran. And the three countries uh, were there. The summit finished with disagreements about the terrorist occupation. And one of the presidents, presidents uh, asked to establish a border, a security border. Hassan Rouhani, the Iranian president, said that most of the territory is is in hands of the terrorist, while uh, the Russian president highlighted the difficulties of reaching an agreement. However, the, these presidents signed an agreement about peace and the presence of the U.S. that allows to put in place all of the conditions to come back of all of the refugees in Syria, reach a solution, and put an end to eight years of war. This is what they said. In the last two years, with the objective of recovering peace, our three stations have tapped dip in their contribution. In that sense, our country is key because we are next to the Syrian people. And, to, and we also have uh, refugees. In fact, we have 3.6 million people that fled from the cruelty. We gave them means to survival. And we did not ask for any retribution for this. We are still worried for this, where the organizations have recovered their activities now. It should be a, we should support this place. We should carry out more steps to avoid the terrorist attacks. Of course, there are concerns about the situation in Syria, the problem, the security problems, as well as in other parts of the country, should be solved on the basis of preserving sovereignty and territorial integrity. We think it's an Acceptable. The illegitimate presence of the U.S. has put at risk the integrity and sovereignty of this country. Last year, the president of the U.S. announced his decision to withdraw his troops from Syria. But like all of his other comments, that they were did not go along with the truth. And we do not expect that to happen in the near future. Uh, but however, we think it's necessary to withdraw their, their forces. Israel has intensified their attacks on Syria in the past months. And the authorities of this country have taken full responsibility for these attacks. And they have extended them to Iraq. These are actions are hostile and can cause more tension in the in the region. It's a moment to go to see the map. Idlib, last stronghold in Syria. The Idlib government is one of the 14 provinces of the Syria, with 6,097 square kilometers located in the north and border to Turkey. It is the only stronghold occupied by terrorists. This is the last one of, the, of a very awful war that has left 1.5 million dead. 
en virtud de los pactos entre las facciones extremistas due to the agreements with the extremists these were groups that, that, re that reject leaving the, their arms Ever since 2015, it's been occupied by Al Drusa, but exactly a year ago, Russia and Turkey agreed to having a demilitarized zone between 10 and 20 kilometers guarded by the military police of both countries. In 2018, though heavy weapons were removed and the military offensive stopped, however, Haït Tarid al-Sham, that is part of al-Musra, increased their control in the province. In May of this year, the military ceased fire. This measure was not respected, and on 13 times this, uh, this ceasefire was violated. This is that the Syrian government put, uh, did not respect the ceasefire. There were even 42 attacks by extremist groups. This, of course, were able to recover 10, pay, 10 strategic places. After these events, on August 31st, there was an agreement for a new ceasefire. Nine hours later, the coalition led by the U.S. led a bombarding. However, regardless of this, of this attack, there is a moratorium on this on the war. After the liberation of almost all of the Syrian territory from terrorism, the government of Bashar al-Assad wants to recover all of, the, all of the land and apparently 350 installations will go back into production and guarantee more than 9,000 jobs. There's also a, a city urban jobs that will recover schools, cultural centers, hospitals, and the electric system has also been recovered. I invite you to see one of the plans that has to do with the international commitment to achieve the stability in Syria. The format of Astana, this is a initiative, a parallel, a parallel initiative of the United Nations to uh, attain a ceasefire created in 2017 with the purpose of continuing with the peace agreements the proposal launched by the Russian president to the president of, of Turkey gave way to a mixed commission along with Iran to reach the integration with the opposition and the government. The first meeting held between the 23 of uh, February and to the 28th established that the that this institution will guarantee the whole process. Fourteen summits have been have been held, and three trilateral summits between Turkey, Iran, and Russia. In all of these meetings, there has been a, a re renewed agreement to go after sovereignty and territorial integrity. There will be inter exchange of refugees, of prisoners, a, zo a, a sea zone. Among the most important actions were these. We're going to see our digital websites regarding this meeting that was held in Turkey. Let's start with the Syrio-Libanese newspaper. The president of Syria decrees a general amnesty. A day before the summit, Bashar al-Assad was going to give a an amnesty to reduce the, all of the jail time for all of the crimes and everything that was against uh, this, uh, this law was in the law against terrorism and this would diminish the time in jail 
or to dentro de los tres meses y aquellos que estén en el exterior tienen un plazo de seis meses. And for that, the people would have to turn themselves in. This does not cover the Syrians who has taken arms to fight against the government or that has jo that have joined the terrorist groups. This marks the first time that Bashar al-Assad has given, has tried to show any type of commitment to peace. And this is the first time that this is offered for civilians. Another website that we recommend is Latin Press. And they announce the return of 29,000 displaced uh, to Rubkan. The Commission of the Syria Russian announced the coming back of 29,000 citizens that were evacuated up until now. The Syrian government established 50 places of temporary stay and uh, there's going to be groups of people that are going to be registering their entrance. Hussein Mahlouf said in a press conference that any citizen that's been displaced even those who were having who had arms who want to come back to Syria they will be welcomed back. As a recommendation, we invite you to go to Resumen Latinoamericano. April 29th, they published the following text. The United States the imperial objective is to give continuity to the war in Syria to find the domination of the Middle East. This is written by Ramon Pedregal Casanova, and they say that what they try is to impose themselves and what they will do it through the destruction of those, pay, of those places, stealing their resources, and this is how they take these places away from their legitimate owners. But finally, now they've lost. Syria is the first place where they found a, a military force that's equivalent, that have repelled them. This military force that has combat the terrorism that has also stopped their attempt to advance and then take over China and Russia. Now I'm going to add our collaborator from Telesur. He's in Istanbul. This is Hector Chavari. Tell us a little bit more about the summit. Hi, everybody in Telesur, after several hours of the meeting of the three presidents in Ankara, apparently they three are satisfied after the conjoint uh, declarations. Rouhani says that he insists that the frontiers of Syria must be respected and that there is no country in the world that has the right to go into them and do whatever they want within a foreign country that is ruled by Bashar al-Assad. Putin insisted that there must be a continuing anti-terrorist fight in Syria and Erdogan says that the refugees that live in Turkey Turkey should have the right to go back to a land in peace and with no risk at all. So these three presidents are relatively satisfied after this meeting. Back to you. Thank you, Aitor. This is Aitor from Istanbul in Turkey. And, you, and we ask ourselves, what does this alliance of these countries represent in the geopolitics of this region? Who benefits from all of this? Who wins with the peace in the region and there? We'll be right back after this.
ese estrechón de manos that entre esos tres pesos welterweights say a lot to the geopolitics of the world not only for the region of, of the countries how about if we evaluate the postures of this tandem Russia, Turkey and Iran as I said before the welterweights of the region that represents this international coalition Here's part of the answers. This group of three redesigns the spectrum in the Middle East. All of them have as a common denominator to confront the interests of the U.S. and the region. If it's true, there was tensions in the time of the Middle East when they were part of NATO. Moscow and, Moscow and Ankara have become allies to these countries. These countries are joined by political, economical, and military interests. These three countries have con contributed for the military Syrian government uh, expel the terrorists. Iran and Turkey are joined by the interest of destroying the terrorist groups that have been supported by Israel and the U.S. In the recent meetings, they've also agreed that there should be a new par economic paradigm, paradigm that is based on dollar. Erdogan, who, who was a victim of uh, an attempt a coup and several attacks on behalf of the U.S., insists on finding new mechanisms in the commercial area. The meeting of Turkey and Russia goes back to years. One of the demonstrations is one of the biggest mosques that is was built in Russia. And in the energetic field, three countries have signed agreements. In August 16, Gadir from Iran signed a trilateral agreement with the Turkish company and the Russian company to find uh, to develop new projects. All of this information will be submitted to a filter of information. So from, from Spain, we have our, our international analyst, and from Russia, we also have an, in, an expert writer on this. Hello, we're greeting you from Caracas. Can we hear your point of view? What does the peace in Syria represent for these three countries? I'm speaking of Turkey, Russia. And Iran. Because for them, on the agenda, in first place is this peace process. Good afternoon from Valencia, Spain. Okay, let's see the conflict. This is a very long topic because it's already been eight years. Currently, the fifth summit of these three countries, there's normally many pictures, many documents, a lot is spoken about, but at the end of the day, there is no military advance. So the, Tur the Turkish people could think that uh, in prior times of their glory, La, eh, del norte de Siria, even they even changed the geography of north eh, of Syria. Que han de del Otomano, eh, la cantidad de the amount of terrorists that have Turquía, gone through the otra, no territory of Turkey and hundreds of thousands of terrorists have eh, come in. So therefore, the topic is very complicated, and they're playing it very well between the Russians and the Americans, because the Iranian, for them, Turkey is just an ally, a long-term ally. And yes, for them it's something like the Islam in the territory. There is a. They have, they need a Sunnite country that have different tendency that as the Saudi Arabia and Egypt. What Russia is trying to put away 
is uh, to get away from NATO. This all because of, of the missiles, S-400. And at the economic level, there have been meetings. And Russia will keep on thinking of a strategic way. What is true in all of the story, this is a territory that has been occupied by mercenaries, by terrorists, supported by Turkey, by NATO. Turkey has always been more with force. And there's Syrian frontier called Adana that dominates in Turkey and that they should respect the sovereignty and the integrity of the Turkish. However, Turkey has never tried to understand that they don't have any possibility of taking over Syrian territory or intervene in the constitution of Syria where they want to make uh, one way or the other people come in. Just like they've done in other countries of the Balkans or what happens in Libya and Lebanon. This is terrible for Syria. In this topic of the relationship between Turkey and Syria, we will be talking further on. Let's uh, add to our discussion Mr. Rodriguez. As we said at the beginning, he is also a great gentleman and he joins us from Moscow. And speaking of Moscow, a Russian said that here there are interests that go together of, of pacifying and as well as interests of Russia uh, Iran. So there is this, this conflict between these three countries. But I want to go back to Russia. Why is this country a risk to those terrorist groups in Syria and therefore adds itself to this alliance to take out of the country any, any trace of the Islamic strongholds. Good afternoon to everybody here in Telesur. Well, Russia has tried to take over a policy in this conflict, and they have found a way, a mechanism to find a solution in Syria. So it's important to check it out. And let's not forget that this has different uh, layers. First, an internal layer. And for example, the, how the country has been constituted and a terrorist group that began uh, a war, so-called the Arab Spring. In this sense, there has been a... And there is this conflict that is international, where Russia it's important for us to see and understand that there is a tendency to go after the, the Russian oil. And in this sense, Syria has an important spot in this. And their important role in this is that they should uh, guarantee the stability and peace of Bashar al-Assad so they can have a strong, a strong representation on the international conference. 
So Russia takes up a position where they find a solution. And they have also adopted through the 224 uh, regulation. There is a, this relation that says that you must follow through international law. So after these expositions, it's a position of the imperialistic uh, country and from the, their need to destabilize a region that the U.S. imperialistic government has been trying to do in Syria. And their interests are still are still roaming around and of course there were calls for anti-terrorist marches the another aspect that should be taken into account is the humanitarian defense of rights in this sense there is a great support uh, militarily and humanitarian. There have been many operations done by Russian doctors on Syria, and there has been how it has seen how uh, through all of these military advances in the military scope, there have been able of thousands of hundreds of refugees to come back, to return to Syria. Es importantísimo eso que acabo de decir porque lo hace sobre What you just meant realidad. is important because you're saying based on the reality. Russia has participated in more than one convoy, than one convoy of help through the Syrian government. And all of this through elements that allow people to, to survive after eight years of of, um, of war. Let's go to our other guests. How do the Syrians see this concern of Turkey so there can be peace in Syria? Well, I will be very brief because you can speak for hours on this. There is no just like the revolution in Hong Kong, it has been an invention, and they want to try the Middle East. At the end, it was a game that they tried to come in with the religious topics. Now we're back to the present. Turkey is not interested in becoming peaceful in any any day because this man that is the leader of the this is what this is a terrorist group. Erdogan, Erdogan, while he, while Bashar is in place, he will not help because they're not going to help the Muslim brothers. And this is clear that they will try to be up until the end. It is fully known that there, is our new, there are new weapons inside more than 11,000 missiles, anti-tanks, and they come from the Balkans. A journalist has just demonstrated the production and fabrication of Serbia to supply this place. This, this man does not want to find peace. And they're under the rule of Syria. I'm a pessimist. I said it began before. Don't try again with force. We have been able to advance with the, for the sacrifice of the Syrian government and their allies. And what we've seen is that in a couple of days, they're back. So Iran needs to take a line of, diploma, of diplomatic for many years. 
even because of the block, blocking. And what they tried to do was to take good, have good relationship with the country. However, we've seen how the, in the recent days Turkey has stepped away from the imperialistic uh, economy of the U.S. and they've criticized some actions, like, for example, the one of Syria. Well, like in Venezuela, this is normal. I, I always celebrate the Turkish uh, answer in the Venezuelan problem, but concretely, Venezuela is uh, what they're worried about is the Kurd, are the Kurds. I think most of them that now live under the U.S. flag used to follow Lenin. Well, these are just mercenaries, that they think that they're going to be able to charge something. They don't know that the U.S., at the end of the day, they're not going to leave a single square kilometers with anybody alive because what they want is a Syrian government. And they perfectly know who, who helped them because they escaped from Turkey. And we've seen that all of, we've received all of this refugees. So the problem of the Kurds and of the, of the Turkish is that one third of the people of the Turkish are Kurds. And we have no problem with the Kurds. The secretary of the, of the political party is Kurd ever since 1940. Four presidents of the 21st century of a Kurd origin, and I can name you even more, and they live with no problems at all. Kurdistan, which is a nation, there is still, this is not a, a territory that has become a nation. Thank you very much, Fidas. Let's go to the opinion that David Gomez Rodriguez has. I'm going to ask him about another actor that we have, because many times we focus on the action of the U.S., but in that same region, there is another element that is ongoing. This is the region that is, un, uh, that is in elections. This is Israel. And there might be a fifth re-election of Benjamin Netanyahu. How does David see this element? Well, yeah, it's important that we must take into account in this scenario the influence, the bad influence, should I say, that Israel has created in the stabilizing of the, of the Middle East. It is important for us to see that it's not only an isolated state, but it's part of some countries that through inter economic interests they have created hostile conditions in the Arab world. <clears throat> it's important for us to assess the relationship and the conflict between Israel and Iran. Therefore, this scenario that we're analyzing today is very complex because it has one of its sides cut off. So this is very interesting. It's important to see that any, at the end of the day there is an emphasis on the, on the part of that has been chipped off. Well, this war has many reasons, many factors that have particular interests that have to do with religion, culture geopolitical, economic, commercial. So we're going to define, and we're going to define in, in short how Israel and it's important to see 
that there that if uh, Israel has an alliance with the U.S., they're still going to they still have an important role. The U.S. spoke of a withdrawal from of the troops from the Syrian territory, and this has not been fulfilled. We have also seen how they have no no legal framework especially from the international law about this uh, about this uh, continuous invasion and uh, and they are generating finance and support for several groups that in the process have also been evolving their positions and therefore have generated bigger conflicts in the Syrian in the Syrian camp. So we're calling on all of the sectors that they add to have a period of rejection to the war and to foment uh, dialogues that allow free some countries and a human policy that will help us see what they present. We can see that one of the biggest dramas is the Syrian war. And we've seen how, how the authorities of the world that are part of this conflict and they're part of NATO have played a very disgraceful role. And in this new world order, and although it's, um, it's a contradiction, to reach these agreements uh, is very important to have coherence. And the, the respect to the peoples. So it's a no to the war. That should be what we all think. Thank you very much, David Rodriguez. He was, he was calling us from Valencia, España. And we thank you for your participation. And this last part that one of our guests said opens the door to speak of the next topic on the next segment. This is the counterpart, the U.S., Israel, Saudi Arabia, and European Union. What is what it favors them? The peace? Do they really fulfill their promise to withdraw all of their troops from Syria? This is what we're going to see with another guest after the pause. We'll be right back. Although last year the president of the U.S., Donald Trump, announced the withdrawal of the U.S. troops from Syria, the facts say the contrary. Some days ago, some days ago was led by the coalition headed by the, the U.S. This left several dead and injured. And how does the U.S., Israel, Saudi Arabia, European Union see this situation. As a counterpart to the alliance, Turkey, Iran, and Russia, there's a coalition led by the U.S. and is formed by Israel and Saudi Arabia. These nations have financed and given weapons to terrorist groups of the region, particularly to the self called Islamic State. These groups designed and trained by Washington and Tel Aviv are useful as they are an, an element of destabilization in the Middle East. This is what happens in Syria. 
buscan derrocar al presidente this group Bashar tries to out uh, Bashar al-Assad so Syria cannot be a powerful element in the region there have been uh, the ending of four of four seas there was an initiative to join these four seas and Syria would be the, the link between four countries and this construction of the, the gas gas pipeline was ongoing everything was suspended ever since Israel and the US began to arm radical groups that are opposing uh, the Syrian government the strategy was obvious when Trump said on March 30th that their men were going to withdraw from Syria but weeks ago he led a bombarding in the northeast of Syria near Turkey the same thing happened on June 30th when the army of the US led a military military action uh, near Aleppo this is the background that allow, that helps us uh, in this interview we're going to have with our next guest. He is a specialist in this topic. Hello, thank you for having us here. We're seeing in this part of the analysis how there has been interaction between the U.S., Saudi Arabia, Israel as forces that uh, stop the peace in Syria. And like other ex experts say, it have helped to, to start the, the fear in this area. It's true. But let's not forget that these these two forces, like Israel and the United States, are are living, uh, are ongoing their elections in their countries. For Israel, this means to increase and carry out more terrorist groups to favor the position of the current uh, prime minister that is seeking re-election. Sí. They want to take over as a power and, fight, and the re-election of, of the prime minister. This would be the fifth re-election. And the U.S. really doesn't care with this re-election, but when it's a Latin American government that wants re-election, then they don't like it. And in the U.S., Trump is not a military ex an expert in military. He's a disaster. So he's avoiding to start a conflict or continue a conflict that has not been fruitful for him. And on the contrary, it, it can be harmful for his, for his campaign. And that's why he stops any type of war against Iran and Syria. They're reevaluating uh, their strategy. So we've got these two political scenarios in the U.S. and Israel that coincidentally have benefited uh, the war in Syria, Syria in favor for benefit Iran, Russia, and the Syrian militaries and Turkey. So I would say based on my own analysis and those of others that this would be a step to stop the, the war in Syria if we add these three factors that are beyond the geopolitical context of these eight years in Syria. Uh, isn't Trump worried of turning their backs to, to, to Israel? Well, this looks a lot like the announcement of United Arab Emirates. What they said is we're taking our, our troops from Yemen. The U.S. says we're taking our troops against from Syria, but they never do it. What they've done is that, that this uh, goes through the press, but, that, but they really don't do what they've said they're going to do. Let's not forget that uh, they've lost the, the war in Syria. 
Right now, there's nothing he, uh, the U.S. can do to win this war. It's lost. However, this, uh, don't you think that this is part of the, of the objectives? of Washington? No, because they would have done it already. And because based on the experience in Latin America and uh, actions that the U.S. thinks are, priori are in a priority, they just carry out with it. So what does the, U the U.S. want to have a permanent presence in Latin America and now they're looking at the Middle East? Well, they, that just might be. So I go back to my question, Don't, doesn't the U.S. think in this context to leave Israel alone, the Israel of Netanyahu? Well, it wouldn't be the first time that Trump is uh, not fulfilling their promise to their allies. The United States has favored in these uh, recent months with Trump polemic decisions against their natural enemies in the Middle East, in the European Union, and in Latin America, too. So, Let's not even speak of their natural enemy, of his natural enemies, because some conflicts uh, have just wrought. Well, speaking of common enemies, this conflict between Iran and the U.S. has an object of many debates, and we can speak of non-alignment when we speak. And one group is Iran, and another group is the United States. What is your evaluation on this non-relationship? Well, this non-relationship Apparently, the, the alliance is more inclined against the attack of Iran. As of now, Russia has more time deciding to support in all of the aspects and with blood of his people to defend Syria. This uh, may be that beyond the geopolitical interest, let's not forget that when there was a Hussein and when there was Gaddafi, they're, search, they're trying to look to recover figures of that weight. And apparently it's uh, Bashar al-Assad who's going to do it. Erdogan wants to do it, but that's going to be a bit hard, although Russia has taken advantage of Erdogan to add Turkey to their alliance, to their military interests, because in a Russian ally, and then we need him to leave. So this is the... Uh, this is the medium uh, size objective. In the case of Turkey, let's see what the United Emirates uh, say. Russia used to be used to be a bit more quiet about this. But time has shown that that, that giant was a paper tiger. So, with a paper tiger, you have to act because either you burn it or you cut it. Well, what an interesting analysis. Let's go to conclusions. Some say that it's an alliance based on particular interests. Others trust that it's an act of goodwill on behalf of, for the peace in Syria. What is und undoubtedly is that this summit of the trilateral summit led by Turkey, Syria, Turkey, Russia, and Iran shows an interest to find uh, solutions to this trans-border trans terrorism that's financed by the U.S. We'll see you next time.
Pakistani journalist Tariq Ali examines the mass media influence promoted by imperial.